So here in this problem, we need to show that the following expression is true whenever a, b and c are in a geometric progression. So let's begin. It's given already given here that a, b and c are in geometric progression. So let's specify the common ratio. So let the common ratio, we're going to represent it by the letter r in lower case. Now, the first term will be a, then the second term b, the b will be equals to a times r and c will be a r squared. So these three numbers are in geometric progression where b equals to a r and c equals to a r squared. Now we'll start from the left hand side of a given expression. So we have a multiplied to b squared plus c squared which will be equals to a times. So b squared means we have a squared r squared plus c squared will be a squared r raised to the power of now let's multiply it. So we have a cubed times r squared plus a cubed times r raised to the power of 4. Now we're going to take a r squared as the common factor from both the two terms. So we have a squared plus a squared times r squared, which will be equals to, so a r squared, so that's nothing but our third term, c. a squared, that's the first term. And a squared r squared, so that's the square of the second term, that's a r. So we have b squared, which gives us the expression on the right hand side. Hence, proved. So this is another problem. We need to show that the following expression is true. And a, b, and c are still in geometric progression. So that means we have a, the first term, the b equals to a r, and c equals to a r squared. So these three numbers are in g, p. So let's begin. So we'll start from the left hand side. So on the left hand side, we have a squared multiplied to b squared. So b squared will be a squared times r squared times c squared. So c squared will become a squared times r raised to the power of 4. So this is now multiplied to 1 over a cubed plus 1 over b cubed. So b cubed is a cubed r cubed plus 1 over c cubed. So c cubed will then become a cubed times r raised to the power of 6, which will be so we have a squared times a squared times c squared. So that's a raised to the power of 6. Multiply to r raised to the power of 6. All multiplied to. So now we're going to distribute a raised to the power of 6 times r raised to the power of 6 to each of the terms within the parentheses. So we have a raised to the power of 6 times r raised to the power of 6 divided by a cubed. Plus we have a raised to the power of 6 times r raised to the power of 6 divided by a cubed r cubed. Plus a raised to the power of 6 times r raised to the power of 6 divided by a cubed r raised to the power of 6. Which is going to give us a cubed r raised to the power of 6. Plus so we have a cubed times r cubed plus a cubed. Right. Now furthermore we can rewrite it as a r squared raised to the power of 3. Plus a r raised to the power of 3 plus a raised to the power of 3. So a r squared, so that's simply c cubed. a r is b, so we have b cubed plus a cubed. And this is the expression on the right hand side. Hence, proof. Let's move on to the next part. So in part 3, we need to prove the following. Since we are given that a, b and c are in geometric progression, so it immediately follows that square of the middle term will be equals to product of the first and the third term. So we'll start from the left hand side. So on the left hand side, we have 1 over a squared minus b squared plus 1 over b squared. Let's combine them. We'll have a common denominator, a squared minus b squared multiplied to b squared. Then the numerator, we're going to have b squared plus a squared minus b squared. So b squared, b squared gets cancelled. So this leaves us with a squared divided by b squared multiplied to a squared minus b squared. Now what we'll do, we'll substitute the value of b squared with ac, which is going to give us a squared divided by, so we have ac multiplied to a squared minus, uh, b squared will become ac, which will be a squared divided by ac. Now from a squared minus ac, if we take out a as the common factor, so we have a squared times c multiplied to a minus c. Right. So here we can cancel out a squared and a squared of the numerator and denominator. We have 1 divided by c multiplied to a minus c, which is going to give us uh, 1 divided by ac minus c squared. 
Now we notice AC is that's B squared, so we have 1 over B squared minus C squared. So this is the expression on the right hand side. So I have successfully showed that this given expression is true. Let's move on to the next part. Part 4, we need to prove the following. Now again, we have A, B and C. These three numbers are in geometric progression, which implies that B squared will be equals to A times C. Now we'll start from the left hand side of the expression. Now we can rewrite our expression as a plus 2c plus 2b all multiplied to a plus 2c minus 2b. Now here we're going to use an identity which is a plus b multiplied to a minus b. So that's also equivalent to a squared minus b squared. So here our a represent is represented by a plus 2c and 2b is representing b here. So that meant we were going to get a plus 2c whole squared minus 2b whole squared. Now it becomes easier to expand it. So expanding a plus 2c whole squared, we're going to get a squared plus 4ac plus 4c squared minus 2b whole squared. That will be 4b squared. Now we have a squared plus 4c squared plus 4ac. Now if we look at this particular condition here, so if multiplying both sides with 4, so we have 4b squared equals to 4ac, which means uh, 4ac minus 4b squared, so this will be equals to 0. So you can combine the second and the fourth term to get 0, and this gives us the expression on the right hand side, hence proof. Now, coming to the fifth and the final part, we need to prove the following whenever a, b, and c are in geometric progression. So let's write down the condition since a, b, and c are in geometric progression. So we have b squared equals to a times c. Now we are going to start from the right hand side of the given expression, which is a plus b plus c divided by a minus b plus c, but we can also rewrite it as a plus c minus b. So what we'll do, we're going to multiply both numerator and the denominator with a plus b plus c. So that means in the numerator, we have a plus b plus c whole squared. And in the denominator, so the reason why I wrote a plus c minus b, that's because this can be also expressed as a plus c whole squared minus b squared. So here we're making use of the fact that a minus b times a plus b, that's equals to a squared minus b squared. In our case, here a is represented by a plus c and b is represented by little b. So now we have a plus b plus c whole squared in the numerator and in the denominator we have a squared. So we're expanding a plus c whole squared. So we have a squared plus 2ac plus c squared minus b squared. Now we can further Simplify the denominator portion. So in the numerator, we have a plus b plus c whole squared divided by a squared plus. So we have 2ac. So instead of ac, you can replace it with b squared. So we have 2b squared plus c squared minus b squared. And finally, this gives us a plus b plus c whole squared divided by a squared plus b squared plus c squared. And this is the expression on the left hand side. Hence, we have successfully proved the following.